All right, guys. You know, quite often in my videos, I'll slip off camera and I'll come back with a beautifully deburred, shined up part. And I've been asked to show you exactly how I do that. Now, here's a chunk of 303 stainless left over from a previous job. Saw cut. Brutal edges on it. You could probably shave with this part. Same thing with this aluminum part. Saw cut, band saw cut, big hangers on the back. You do not want to have to sit and file on stuff like this if you have a bunch of them to do. It's going to take you forever and that's eh, just not going to look all that great. So, my favorite go-to's once upon a time, and this is the shop gem, if you guys want to take anything from this video right here, take this. This is a flap wheel. This is a flap sander wheel. One side has got sand aggressive, you know, abrasive grit on it and the other side has got nothing. So they are directional. They have to turn correctly. If you've ever used one of these, you know that it never maintains this shape. There's always digs in it, gouges, broken corners. They are horrible if you're going to bounce around in between pieces because anytime you try to dress them, you just sand down whatever it is you're trying to dress it with. The secret to getting a nice flat wheel like this, I'll take this with you, is to take it off the arbor on the grinder, turn it around. There you go. And as it spins, the abrasive is on the back side. So use a stone, use a carbide tool, use a house brick, whatever you have to. When you press it up against the flap sander wheel with the wheel running in reverse, it will cut through the fiber, through the cloth, through the backing, and then get to the abrasive, and it will give you this razor sharp profile. There, you heard it from me first. My favorite go-to wheels for deburring on a production level are these guys right here. Scotch-Brite fiber wheels. You can get them in different densities, different thicknesses, different diameters, and it's very open pour. These are more of a polishing wheel than a cutting wheel. Now let's take a look at what a cutting wheel profile looks like. You can see that this is considerably tighter knit than this. These are very fabric based and if you get down on these things real hard there's going to be fibers all over the place. And that's what those spiders keep getting caught up in on my shop. Kick off from this and the walk off mats. Anyway, you want to mildly break a corner on a part you can use a polishing wheel to do it. If you want to use uh, a little bit more aggressive, you can use a cutting wheel. This guy is going to cut through the parts fairly substantially. It looks like a cut off disc for a reason. Once you've got it deburred, once you've got it buffed down to where you want it, move into a scotch brite like this. This is the same kind of thing that you would put on a floor buffer and buff your floor or do your dishes with. This is a 3M Scotch-Brite product, I believe. Scotch-Brite. Very fine. They come in a several different grades. The pink ones are usually fine and very fine, and the blue ones, a little bit harder. They're not going to break if you bend them, but they cut a little bit more aggressively. So I have one of these guys mounted on a pedestal grinder that I use specifically for buffing. One of these on one side, one of these on the other side, and it works like a charm. Let's take these guys back over to that particular dedicated machine, work these edges over real quick, and show you what kind of finish you can expect with this combination. I guarantee you're going to go out and buy them. Scotch spray wheel on one side. Scotch spray wheel on the other side. Let's start with the stainless piece and see what that does. Let's put some light on this subject here. Actually, it was better without it, wasn't it? There you go. Three or three stainless steel. Just these four top edges. You can see that it puts a very nice edge on it. Quick too, quicker than the file. Let's hit this on a sander, come back and polish it and buff it. See how that looks. Okay, I just pushed this up against the belt sander, take the saw marks out of it. With a nice flat profile on the wheel, I'm going to buff the front of this. This piece will get hot, so 
be careful if you do this. This is going to be real time. Working the part back and forth, up and down. And it is getting warm right now. Scratchers are nearly non-existent. Let's put it across the pink side. Clean it up a little bit. Tell you, for a production deburring tool, you can't beat that combination of wheels. Stainless steel, and that is absolutely beautiful. Let's do it with a piece of aluminum. Let's finish off this end with a piece of aluminum here. I will press this up against the sander to get the deep cuts out of it, and we'll do exactly the same thing that we did with this. it on here check it out these pink wheels will give you more of a satin bright satin finish than a gloss finish I would say for a quickie that is not a bad job whatsoever. That fiber wheel works extremely well on breaking edges. It's a great tool to have close to your bandsaw if you are sawing pieces off for production purposes. Put a cut wheel in there, take the edges off real quick. Uh, if you don't want to damage it with a belt sander, it's a great way to cut the burr away and it stops after it cuts the burr. I would highly recommend if you don't have those in your shop, get them. All right, just so I don't get accused of leaving anything out of the video, let's put one of these cut wheels on and hit the edge of the stainless and show you the difference in cutting ability between these and these. Naturally, the larger the diameter, the more surface footage you're gonna get. They might be the same RPM, but this is gonna be going faster because there's more of it. So the bigger the wheel, if you wanna cut something down, use a bigger diameter wheel. Let's see what kind of damage we can do with this guy. All right, I'm going to take one of the four edges here, and I'm going to cut it down on the bigger diameter cut wheel, and we can compare what type of aggressive behavior we get versus the polishing wheel on the other side. And I'm only going to do in between the corners. I'm not going to do the whole edge, just in between so you can see how fast this cuts. And at all costs, try to avoid slipping into it. I 
Okay, now that is a huge difference. That is the difference. This is a buffing wheel or a polishing wheel. That is a cutting wheel. You want to put an aggressive radius on something or tear off some really nasty burrs, this is the kind of wheel that you're going to want to use. And I do believe they make these thicker and larger like the other ones. But I like the control you get with a thinner wheel. But there you go. Huge difference. Keep them around. They're good for bull work. After you've got your net shape on, go to the polishing wheel, clean it up. Look like a machine feature. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good weekend.